Today I thought it would be fun to go through a bunch of different chartreuse alternatives. A lot of us have been lamenting that chartreuse is in short supply. And for those of you that don't know what chartreuse is, it is a legendary French alpine liqueur based on another liqueur called Genepi, which is sort of a gin style liqueur infused with a bunch of botanicals from the alpine region. So chartreuse has been in short supply because the order of Carthusian monks that make chartreuse in France uh, sent a letter to Murray Stetson and Sons, which is the sole importer of chartreuse to the United States, basically saying that they want to continue focusing on monastic life, and because of that, they will not be ramping up supply to meet demand. So what this did was make chartreuse a product that is in such short supply that you can only get it when you can get it, and you're lucky if you get one. Usually when products like this become allergies, it also drives the price way, way up. So chartreuse has already seen a pretty significant price increase from somewhere in the 80s, 90s. I've even seen a $120 bottle. And that puts a lot of us who love a last word or a bijou kind of in a pickle. And so even though it's really easy to lament the scarcity of chartreuse, we are incredibly lucky that we're living through a massive spike in spirits production. And not only that, the popularization of Amari and other really obscure liqueurs. And of course, of course, this surge in spirits production is directly a result of the surge in cocktail making and inspiration and videos out there on the internet. So nowadays, there are a few companies making Genepi style liqueurs that offer really great replacements for chartreuse. Are they 100% the same? Not at all. But some of them are very, very, very close, and all of them will do in a pinch. First bottle we're gonna be looking at is Genepi de Alps. It is the most obvious replacement for chartreuse. Back when I was working at Coles, we used to call Genepi here the poor man's chartreuse. Uh, because it's just a much cheaper bottle. It's made by vermouth maker Dolan in the Chambéry region of France, and it's named for a plant in the Artemisia family. Genepi is a legendary alpine liqueur, which I already said earlier, it dates back many, many hundreds of years, and this is a great example of that liqueur. It is the original Après Ski liqueur. If you spend any time skiing in the Alps, then you know what I'm talking about. Although Genepi is pretty close to chartreuse, it has a little bit less complex flavor and it's more intense sugar, but it's still not overwhelmingly sweet. It's lighter in body, it's lighter in intensity, Side by side, you can definitely taste the lack of complexity in Genepi. But in cocktails, you're not gonna miss those nuances, especially ones with citrus juices and sugar. It's around 30 to 35 bucks a bottle, so if you pick up one of these, you're gonna save a little bit of cash. Centum Urbis. The words Centum Urbis are Latin for 100 herbs and is made by Bordiga in Piedmont, Italy. So this is Bordiga's version of the Genepi style liqueur. All the botanicals in the spirit are infused separately and then rested for 60 days in stainless steel tanks. At the end of the 1800s, a man named Pietro Bordiga, who owned a very famous bar in Turin, decided to take what he knew about plants and herbs and started making liqueurs. Then he opened a distillery. Bordiga makes all their own infusions and still gathers many of the botanicals that they use in the Alps nearby. Centum Herbis has a definite chocolate and coffee bean note that gives it another layer lacking in chartreuse. So you gotta be careful when you're putting this in certain cocktails. But on the other hand, that extra flavor profile can be a good thing and it makes a fantastic last word. It's a nice liquor to expand your horizons in the Genepi category. It goes for about 35 to $40 a bottle. So it's a little bit more expensive than the Genepi, but it's still under the price that we're finding chartreuse at these days, so it's still a win. Faccia brutto, it means ugly face in Italian. The last time I did a video, I got really, really busted on the uh, pronunciation of the word faccia. I was saying faccia, faccia, like, uh, like when you say maraschino, but it's actually faccia brutto. Faccia Brutto Centerba is one of my favorites of this whole bunch. This is the product that in my humble opinion, or maybe not so humble opinion, comes closest to the chartreuse flavor profile. It's made in Brooklyn, New York by a guy named Patrick Miller, who uh, started his career, I guess, at Rucola Restaurant. He grew up in LA in an Italian family, and his company is one of a growing trend of American Amari makers. They make a full line of Amari, uh, which I have one, more other one, uh, and I'm really excited to taste uh, more of this line because they really did such a good job with this one. The flavor of the Chenter Bay, which is also a reference to 100 herbs, is stunningly close to chartreuse, and although the complexity of the spirit while similar, plays out a little bit differently. It's kind of a little bit shorter on the palate. It's not, it's, it doesn't have as much length as you would get in chartreuse. I pick up a little tinge of bitterness on the back palate, which when I was talking with Patrick, he 
said that we don't put any bittering elements in it, so I don't know where you're getting that, but there is a little tiny bitterness, and I love that. I love the way that the length of the drink plays out and how it plays out differently than chartreuse. Of the three products mentioned so far in this video, this is the best of the bunch, and at $48 to $52 a bottle, it's a little bit more expensive, still under what you'd pay for chartreuse, but uh, still a win. So the Bucato Chaparral is a bit of an honorable mention in this particular category. There are many, many flavor characteristics of this Amaro that make it very close to green chartreuse. And I picked up the bottle because I heard it referenced as a green chartreuse replacement time and time again. But in truth, it does not really match green chartreuse that much. Um, it is a much, much different spirit. It's made in San Francisco, California, and it's named after Chaparral, an evergreen flavored shrub found all over California and Oregon. Again, it hits a lot of the same notes that you'd get in chartreuse, but it manages to do something really different, like really, really different. This is really less a replacement, but still very worthy of your consideration. And honestly, inside cocktails, it's going to kind of act in the same way that chartreuse would, if that makes sense. Like all of the other uh, liqueurs that we've been looking at in this video, this is also a product that uses uh, ingredients local to its region, just like the best Italian Amaros. It comes in at $35 to $40 a bottle, so it's not a huge investment. And the only downside is that it's a regional product, so some of you might have a little bit of difficulty tracking it down. But if you're in California, it's definitely worth picking up a bottle. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. I hope that I helped you guys find some replacements for that pesky and elusive green chartreuse. I know that some of you guys are going to be pointing out that it didn't cover yellow chartreuse in this video, but I kind of feel like yellow chartreuse needs its own video. And then the other thing about yellow chartreuse subs is that there are not many very good kind of on point ones. You really have to kind of extend your imagination a little bit to really have a sub for yellow chartreuse. Maybe some companies will be filling that void soon. I kind of feel like yellow chartreuse would be a little bit more of a difficult product to reproduce, especially because it's, you know, really made with the same 130 herbs that chartreuse is, but it's just treated in a different way. But we'll be doing that on a separate video. I'm not going to get into it all now like I almost just did, and I'll see you guys later.